my people, today is an amazing day because I'm going to be reviewing and dispelling some concepts through two carnivore doctors debating right now. What's up everyone? Welcome to my very humble channel. But before we get into it, I'm officially 56 right now and counting 16 years in ketosis. But today I'm going to go through a very soft debate between Paul Saladino and Anthony Chafee. There's a lot of things out there that I want to really present to you guys. Why being an MD doesn't mean anything. Carnivore. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, so two questions. Number one, you don't drink coffee. That's amazing. I, I feel yeah. like I'm alone on a, on a planet of aliens that don't drink coffee. Why don't you drink coffee? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I never really felt great uh, with coffee anyway. I figured it was because I had allergies. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's dust and, and, well, you know, some coffees have, uh, you know, dust and mold build up in them. Those are my two main allergies that I really don't do well with. And so I noticed that when I drink coffee, I actually got more lethargic. I got brain fog. I was not feeling great. And then I'd just be wired and jittery, but I, my brain wouldn't work properly. But if I took a caffeine pill, you know, then I then I'd be off to the races. So I would I, I tended to avoid coffee in any case. My intern year, I I just had to do something. So I started incorporating coffee uh, just to survive because I was doing like 120 hour weeks. And you know, so I started drinking coffee then. And but I I never really wasn't a huge coffee drinker after that. But I started doing uh, drinking coffee before work, and um, you know then. When I, when I started doing just, just the meat only, I remember like a couple of weeks into it, I was thinking, I was like, okay, well, what about coffee? I haven't had coffee in several weeks. You know, let's see, let's see what this does to me. And so I just did, you know, some self experiments and I, and I had a cup of coffee and I started noticing my joint pain and muscle soreness. I, I wasn't getting sore after working out. That was, that was a major, major realization for me that, that, you know, we're not supposed to get sore necessarily. And that it's sometimes these defense chemicals and these, this inflammation that they're causing can exacerbate and um, you know, worsen this, this pain of soreness and stiffness that we get after exercise. And I wasn't getting that. I felt great doing that. And then that was the, that was the week that I went back and started playing rugby. And so I'd just been doing a lot of hard training sessions and I said, okay, I'll just try one cup of coffee, see what happens. So I had one cup of black coffee and within 20 minutes, I started feeling my muscles get stiff and sore and, I was like feeling it in real time going like, Oh, what is happening? And I was sore for two days after that. And so I was like, okay, well, that's obviously doing something to me. That's obviously causing some sort of inflammation. And, and there's, you know, these. Okay, so Dr. Anthony Chafee is a carnivore purist. He believes that, based on what I've gathered, this is all by my perception, that you can get everything that you need from meat. He's not really a big muscle meat a proponent, a rather organ meat person. He's more of a muscle meat person, like ribeyes and steaks and things. With that said, Paul Saladino asked him, well, I feel like I'm alone in this world, which clearly he drinks coffee and looks like it. No disrespect. But Paul was asking, what do you think about coffee? And he's going on to the traditional ideology that I agree with, that coffee is incredibly inflammatory and I don't know where to look. 
uh, it, it floods your adenosine receptors with adrenaline. It's very cortisol driven. It's a diuretic. It's got mycotoxins and pesticides and things of this nature. It makes very, very sense that a coffee bean would have anti-nutrients in it and have a lot of mycotoxins and have people react. Right there, the carnivore deb debate just off the cuff on the subject of coffee already just obliterates both of them. Chafee, but I mean, not on the chafee side, but we'll get there. But on the Palo Saladino side, I feel like a lot of people who are medical doctors are very, they base their science on their own experience. And I think that's where you guys become very confused. But we're going to continue on Paul's reaction, which is almost like, this is not a debate, They're almost sort of like pandering to each other. No disrespect, but let's continue. The same sort of chemicals in there that, that the plant, I mean, you know, coffee is a bean, bean is a seed, seed is a plant's baby. I mean, that, that's, it's going to be defending that part of the, the plant more than anything. And, you know, I certainly experienced that firsthand. And, um, it, you know, funny enough, I, I uh, impressed this sort of dietary lifestyles on, a, on an orthopedic surgeon that I, that I know. And, um, and we went to the gym together and we we're working out and he hadn't, he didn't work out all that, all that often. And so I was taking him through my workout and he'd been doing carnivore for a few weeks at this point. And, you know, that has that stuff in there and that has these different defense chemicals in there that are going to cause reactions in your body. And I certainly experienced that firsthand. And, and the people that I, I, I counsel and say, hey, you know, just try it, try it, try coming off for 30 days, see how you do. All of them tell me they feel a lot better after. I think that that's such a good test in general to whether it's kale or spinach or almonds or coffee or, or whatever it is to, to cut it out of your diet for 30 days or so and see how you feel. There's, you know... I know that he didn't say fruit. He is stuck. This is very interesting. And, and we'll get there with the fruit. Later in this podcast, we're going to talk about fruit and fructose, and we're going to disagree a little bit on that. And, and I've had okay. some friendly debates with Ken Berry and on, on fruit and fructose. And I think that ultimately, you know, most people are not really going to want to go super deep in the science. And I don't think that people should be persuaded by an argument with scientific literature. I think that the reason that, that one or- I'm gonna stop right there and I'll agree with him because the scientific liter literature is such garbage. The studies are too short. They don't know what they're doing. Um, if you have, with the ketogenic uh, studies that they did for 30 days and they weren't eating enough fat and they're eating too much protein. And if you don't get the macronutrients down and if you don't know what somebody's baseline health is or what their electrolytes or how their electrolytes or thyroid or reproductive hormones are responding or how they are regulated, then these studies are just nonsense. But we'll continue both of us would share scientific literature with people for, you know, to, to recommend that they cut out coffee or vegetables or fruit or honey or any of these things um, is, is just to, to give them the, a curiosity and then to let them experiment with these things and to see how they feel. I think that's really the best experiment for people is to, I've always said that I want people to be curious. I don't want people to take what I'm saying at face value I want people to question what I'm saying. I want people to do their own research. And I think the best test tube is the experience of your own life. And whether I actually really agree with him. You have to experiment. That's the best thing that anyone can do. And th this is the reason why I cannot stand that people will talk about other people online who say that they've done well because people will always edit and leave out anything that's unfavorable. I can't talk unfavorable because you don't look... You don't get the accolades. Oh my God, that's so fabulous. You lost this much weight. Your, your inflammation's gone. When you say that, you instantly get the validation from the crowd. He just said, you have to experiment yourself, but yet he has followers, yet he pushes products. So it can be a little bit confusing. But one thing I notice is I think they are around the same age. 
where's my mouse? I can Google there. It is. And ironically, Chafee looks way, there's two white dudes around a similar age and both are healthy. Now they don't have the same issues, but Paul looks a little more rough than Chafee. And I'm not a fan really of either of them. I can respect him, but I just thought that was an interesting um, sort of observation. Very interesting. Whether that's cutting out fruit or adding fruit back in or adding honey back in or cutting out honey or adding coffee back in or cutting out coffee or vegetables. I think if you do that, if I'm addressing the listeners now, if, if listeners do that, if you do that, I think over 30 days, most people will be able to tell how they react to that thing and whether they feel better or worse with it in their diet. And I think that's, that's ultimately what we're going for is just to make people curious enough that they can think for themselves and say, you know what, I do have some joint pain. Maybe I should cut out the spinach or the broccoli, or maybe I should try cutting out kale. Maybe I should eat less salads. <clears throat> you know, this is what I want people to do, to have this, this power. It's so funny how he keeps, he cannot, it's hard for him to say cut out fruit, but he is correct in what he's saying. We really, really have to experiment. I just Googled, Paul is 46. And I want to know with Anthony Chafee, how old he is. I think that is also very important to know in comparison because they're around the same age. Now, this is sort of an unfair thing to do because they're two completely different people. But at the same time, it's still interesting. Let's see if I can get his age here. Okay, so he looks like he's 43, so they're three years apart. Three years apart. So Paul is 46, which I'm 10 years older, and Chafee is 43, which makes me 13 years older. All right. I know I shouldn't be comparing, but I just had to. <laughs> Yesterday, I turned 56. So it's very, this is still very interesting for me. Power, so that they don't have to really acquiesce to Western medicine for a medication. Yeah. I think that this, the, the coolest part about doing this work is the, the way that it can help empower people to be their own physicians and be their own healers and to understand that there are so many tools available to all of us. And, and one of those biggest levers is how you adjust your diet and your lifestyle. But tweaking the diet in certain ways can be super powerful. And so that's such an interesting experiment for people. Cut, cut things out, add them back in, see how you feel. I, I emphatically agree with him. Now, I, ha I have not been following Paul, so maybe he's continuing to preach this ideology of experimentation. I really hope that he is because he was such a proponent of the carnivore diet. He got high on it. He got famous on it. He made money on it. He sold books on it and all of a sudden he's done a 180 degree turn and that this is the reason why when you start off being online you really must learn about what you're preaching before you preach because people are going to follow everything that you're doing and ironically now everybody's gone to fruit which is disastrous and i think that's why i'm making this aging comparison between paul who i believe just a few years back looked a little more supple and Chafee, which I don't agree with all of his ideology, but this fructose, this these high amounts of fructose, it's in my opinion that it's starting to show on Paul, even though I'm just agreeing with what he's saying. Sorry, Paul, but girls got to keep it real. Okay, uh, next, I believe Paul is going to be talking about sugar. This is going to be an interesting one. I feel like this debate, because they called it a debate, I'll put it in the link below, was so softball. The point about me showing this video, and I'm going to reiterate this at the end, is that pretty much everything they're saying is anecdotal. There's a lot of guessing out there. There's nothing conclusive in what they're saying. So for these people who are so dogmatic to believe you because you're an MD, might want to rethink following these people to such incredible detail. But let's 
let's continue with this very interesting interview between Paul and Dr. Tafee. It's interesting that you bring up the sugar thing. Let's get into sugar a little bit now. I don't want to spend too much time here, but it is interesting that sort of there's been this war between processed sugar, and I'm saying that intentionally, and, and fat for a long time. And when I wrote The Carnivore Code, I looked at literature that said that fructose was harmful for humans. And I thought, okay, Sugar is bad for humans because sugar is sucrose and sucrose is a disaccharide and that contains glucose and fructose and that looks to be Not to stop this because I hate when people stop videos too soon But he is missing chunks of information and I consider Paul very intelligent And let me tell you some of the biases the the subjective way to look at what you're doing as such an intelligent man who's an MD number one the fruit today is genetically modified, hybridized, selectively bred, crossbred. These fruits are not the fruits that are growing in nature, my people. They have far more fructose. It's unimaginable. I wish I had the video lined up. I really should have. Showing you what real fruit looks like. Real fruit is almost unedible. This plays a massive role. Actually, I had a client once whose mother died from non, non fatty alcoholic, non alcoholic fatty liver disease from eating too much fruit. Now, she was a fruitarian, but the fructose, the amount of fructose in the fruit is insane. Fruit, if it's sweet, is going to attract bugs. That is the reason why we have hybridized it or modified the plant and then added, that's a bug, ironically. And we have added pesticides to produce these Frankenstein fruits. So pretty much everything he's gonna continue to say is null and void. To be bad for humans. I mean, there's a pretty decent amount of evidence in humans that fructose in the form of processed sugars or high fructose corn syrup doesn't look to be great for us. Now, for me, it was a pretty interesting and eye-opening Experience. Literally said, doesn't look for us to be favorable. This is not science talk, people. These are his op opinions. But the fact remains that the fruit that we eat today, this is fact, are not wild species plants. And they do affect us when you Frankenstein Mother Nature. Experience to have issues on a carnivore diet myself that were related to long term ketosis and electrolyte issues and then add sugar containing foods into my diet, fruit and honey, which I would call whole food sources of sugar. And um, to see my lab. Okay, whole food sources of sugar. But our hunter gathers, I've seen some of these discovery tribes, when they climb up trees, honey, honeycombs or honey beehives rather, are very high up in trees. When you don't have ropes and clothing protection, and you're invading their beehive and taking out the honey, extracting the honey. They take it, and if you watch these videos, it's insane. And it's so dangerous. The guy climbs up real high and he starts pulling the combs out. And he throws them down below. Then they share this honey with about 15 to 20, 20 probably 24 to 25 people. And that's it. You're going to only be able to get this honey in season and you risk your life getting it, which means that the amylase is a proof, which is the enzyme in the saliva, proof positive that we can handle sugars and fruit, but not all year and Frankenstein fruit and the honey, my people, honeys, when you go to the market, a lot of these honeys that you get off the shelf, shelf, they're mixed with canola oil and oils. They're, this is not the real honey you would get out of a beehive. Now, real honey is like $30 per jar. 
like 16 ounce or 12 or even an eight ounce jar, you're spending between 20 and 30 bucks. And then there's that problem too. Abs improve in many ways. My fasting insulin stayed low. My fasting blood sugar went down. My And rather, the, they mix the honey with oils and fructose, the fake stuff. A1C went down. My muscle cramps went away. My testosterone went up. My sleep got better. And at the same time, I was kind of looking at the research, and I didn't really believe the research when I first saw it because it sounds kind of hand waving Mind you, he just said his electrolytes tanked, his testosterone had tanked all on carnivore. He needs to do series about this, about the mistakes that he made, but he's not. He's going straight over to fruit. He bypasses all these mistakes he made. I wish they would be more sensitive to people and not just by going through their journey and their lack of learning more about the human body in relationship to cutting out carbohydrates when a human body is used to eating carbohydrates and it's used to that fuel source and you switch it and you're having Frankenstein fruit or you're having rice, which is cultivated, or if you're doing low carb, high fat, or if you're doing strict carnivore, what are the potential risks when your body is used to one source of fuel and, uh, and tools essentially to fix a car? Wavy, or, or it sounds like voodoo, but I, I think that there's something my perspective, and you may disagree with me on this, and we can talk about it. When I look at the research on fruit, and there's an interesting amount of research on fruit and even fruit juice in humans, they appear to be unequivocally beneficial. Um, I know. So he's not saying how it's beneficial. This fits his narrative. He tanked on cardboard. His electrolytes tanked. His energy tanked. All the things he just said. He feels better becoming a fruit aholic. All right, guys, this is such a long video analysis and the bulldozer guy is here. So part two coming tomorrow. This is very interesting, but I want to really prove to you guys to listen to these gurus. Just listen. They don't know. Let me look up here. They don't know. And this debate was so soft. It wasn't a debate. And Chief, he did, they, didn't, they didn't debate each other. They didn't counter each other. They have different ideology. But yet at the same time, nobody really got anywhere. It was very soft. But we're going to do a tart, part, a tart. We're going to be doing a part two tomorrow. <laughs>